Check, check, check. All right. I'm trying to get my uh, level set here. All right, so, um, oh, that's a really sensitive mic. Check. All right. Okay, uh, today is May the 3rd, 2013th, Friday, and we're doing the first uh, book design mastermind. And uh, the terrain of uh, Kindle books is so vast that uh, we'll probably jump around a good bit and we'll just kind of answer random questions and um, like like uh, Clanton and Ann were talking about perfect publishing, so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that uh, and some other resources. Uh, just to get started though, let's do a, a, a quick round and uh, just uh, Shecky say, you know, who you are and what your niche is and if you got a challenge, what it is, and if you got a special resource that people can make use of, and just real quickly. Um, my name is Jeff Schechter. Everybody calls me Shecky. Shecky. I, uh, I'm own a company called The Experienced Man, which is uh, in the dating and relationship niche for older guys in their 40s and 50s. I have a book that's coming out on Kindle, and uh, probably the, the challenge that I'm looking for is how to kind of use that as lead generation. Mm -hmm. um, probably best resource I bring to the table is copywriting. Um, I've been practicing that a lot lately. And that's it. You know, it would also be cool is uh, when you guys uh, get back home today, if you just write up a, a short thing like, you know, I was at the Book Design Mastermind and, you know, my name is Shecky and just write up like that. I, mean, I guess we could do a little resource guide, right? Because if somebody likes a copywriter, right? And call Shecky. Post it in the comments on the meetup group or what? Uh, no, just send an email directly to me and put uh, Book Design Mastermind in the t in the subject line so I... Um, Private resource list. All right, I got you. Yeah. Um, which, by the way, uh, if you're listening to this tape um, uh, and you'd like access to all the information, then um, you know, be sure and buy a copy of the book and uh, do a, a review. Beautiful business. Uh, so, Anne. My name is Ann Bizarro, and I am a nurse. I've been a nurse for many years. I'm also um, a writer, an artist, and a musician, and I had a project show up in my life really unexpectedly, which culminated in a, um, a book, which I just completed recently, and my niche is metaphysical erotica. And so this particular book actually is the first of a series of seven. And um, in this platform that I'm building, there's a series of um, meditations and tools. And, you know, it's really taking erotica to another higher level of consciousness. And so for me, because it's so new and I just launched the site recently and, you know, building it, my, my main um, objective is to find the best source of how to get this book out into the world, whether it be self-publishing, whether breaking it up into smaller volumes is more effective, and also um, <coughs> just really building this platform. It's been a whole lot of fun and very educational. So, yeah. Cool. Hey guys, I'm Clint Evans. I work in the health and business consulting market. I've published a few books. And how, many, how many books have you published? Three so far. And how many have you written for other people that nobody knows about that you publish? Uh, that are currently published, we've got two more of those and three in process. Cool. So, so yeah. if you require a ghostwriter or somebody to publish yeah, yeah. and can't you, afford me. If you if you want to write a book where you don't actually have to type any words on your computer or yeah. write anything on paper, I've got a process oh, for doing that. To talk. Yeah. yeah, by the way, Clint brought up a real good point. I'll talk a little bit about this more in the future, but you don't have to actually write anything to write a book. So we'll get to that in a little bit. So go yeah, ahead. so even if you don't consider yourself a writer, you can get a high-quality book done. Uh, the, the challenge or the feedback I'm looking for is I'm doing some book launches and some contests, so feedback on those, making those more effective. Yeah, cool. Bobby. I'm Bobby Brio, and um, my business is Love is the Answer. I do empowerment work with people and lead classes, and I'm um, a minister, and I do weddings and, and sacred ceremony. I published a book in 2007 called The Divine Power of Edge, and uh, which was a compilation of, of 12 
people's stories about grace. Mm -hmm. And um, and I'm getting ready. I've, I've been in a time out for, for a while. And I have kept notes of all the, that. It's a, been a spiritual time out. Kept notes and I'm ready to put all of that in a book for um, hey, for people to uh, benefit from. Cool. And do you have your book published on Kindle right now? No. Is it in Amazon, the physical book? Not anymore. Okay, cool. Lacey? It's at Barnes & Noble. Oh, we're saying our names and sort of what niche we're working in, our topic we're working with for the book, and if you require any assistance or have any special resources. Um, I, I'm Lacey. I, I uh, work in blogging, and um, I'm... Uh, Choosing my direction to go in blogging in the future, and I don't require any direct assistance, but probably I'll receive from observing. <laughs> and so, by blogging, you mean you uh, you could uh, assist people with their writing if they required any assistance? Are you ha are you just blogging for yourself or others also, or how's that? Um. Blogging for myself and choosing new directions. Cool. So, um, I'm not sure if I'm available to help anyone else. Maybe I could. Cool. All right, Shane. My name is Shane Anciso. I help people conquer technology, and what I'm looking to do is curate the content that I have and utilizing the Amazon publisher account I've been done with for years, anything with for years. To, as another revenue source and as another way to generate, again, public relations and leads for my business, which is around the concept of changing the experience of computer repair and technology in general to help people change their circumstance from being a slave to their computer to conquering their computer, regardless if it's Mac, Windows, or Linux. And utilizing that in new ways to actually either A, make money online, B, get a clarity and meaning in their life, B, C, find people that are relevant to their industry, their niche, and even more importantly, above and beyond that, give it an alternative from going to a complete stranger in the middle of nowhere waiting weeks on end and only ended up more confused when you leave from that experience or that training or that particular tutorial. And what I'm looking to do above and beyond that with Amazon, what I'm seeking right now, I don't currently have any books published. I currently blog off an Alexa 250 top website on the entire planet right now. I'm utilizing that platform as another way to help other people use that platform to generate traffic and relevant leads. So I'm looking for bloggers. I'm looking for bloggers who are looking to continue to increase their traffic and help with their blog because I have access to communities with top bloggers across the world as well. And I'm using that as another way to, again, establish myself as a credible resource people can get to know, like, and trust in the technology field. Cool. That's where I'm at, and that's what I'm looking to utilize Amazon to do to build that credibility even further. My name is Shane Nancy. Cool. <clears throat> I'm Octavia Brooks, um, Reverend, and um, my business is a Temple Without Boundaries. It's an online temple, internet marketing model, and um, I help people solve real problems such as uh, anxiety, uh, sleep issues, mental um, chaos, through <coughs> guided meditation, which in the spiritual world we consider these really basic skills. Um, so my market, I, I'm still refining my understanding my market. I got my <coughs> website launched with products in a shop and all that stuff um, at the beginning of April and I'm launching into marketing right now. So I'm researching all the different marketing channels um, and see writing books, and Kindle, Kindle books and putting out maybe small books on Kindle with a lot of different topics might be a really good approach for me to take as one of my um, traffic drivers. So um, I'm just all ears today and interested in um, maybe getting help with writing at some point. And I'm really, I'm really just kind of formulating my strategy at this point. So anybody who wants to help with marketing strategy, all will do yours about that too. <laughs> Thanks. Cool. Sure. Well, my name is Olivia and see someone. I'm his apprentice, but I'm also uh, <laughs> learning to, I'm um, interested in it because I've had over 18 years in child care experience and I'm looking to try to find a way to 
help those. That you say shop care? Child care. Child care. I'll say no. Dog shop? What are we talking about? <laughs> Child care. And um, so I'm looking to utilize that to write the, something to help parents and the ins and outs of child care that, you know, some parents just want to listen to the doctors and don't always. Um, child care, that's not always the case. That's a scary option. Anyway, yeah. just a judgment on my yeah. part. But in, anyway, um, and having that experience, um, just knowing, working with all ages, and um, just trying to write something that would probably be an assistant to some parents, and helping with their kids, uh, especially now, they, uh, so that's something I'm at, and uh, learning, this technology savvy here because I want to get out of what I've been doing and to other fields, so I'm so sure it's apprentice. Cool. My name is Bart Sharp. Grand Poobah Sharp. No, I apologize. <laughs> Silly didn't say that, sir. <laughs> By your command. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's something over there. By your you command. One finger? No. By your command. That's the okay. silent that warrior. That was his pen. That was his that pen. That was my pen. Oh. <laughs> uh, having a little... T- Oh, Bartar is so, complex. He's yeah, already suffering from his diplomatic duty. No, <laughs> go ahead. Yes, I am the new HC. It's not yeah, paranoia if they're really out to get you right. <laughs> I'm Bart Sharp. My business is uh, therapy for the body, mind, and spirit. And you're the new HCC president, too. Oh, that kind of yeah, missed on the tape. Boy, I like that support, though. Well, I mean, it, it kind of got. Don't you want to get a little uh, pop on the tape there in case somebody likes to visit exactly, HCC, right? Exactly. Uh, but what I do with therapy for the body, mind, and spirit is work for with individual sessions. And I work a lot in traumas, repressed emotions, shame, sadness, fear, anger, and a lot of past life and stuff that people just don't have a good answer for. I've been trying to write a book for two years on anger and how the techniques that I kind of explored and developed and vintage and learn from other people on how to clear anger in a body, cellular, energetic level. And I'm having a really difficult time writing it, but that's why I'm here. It's because it's somewhere in my back burner to do that. Um, As a holistic chamber of commerce president, I am hoping to link Austin's Austin's facilitators and those who are interested in um, this alternative medicine at all levels together. Uh, it's an altruistic position for me. And that um, I'm dedicating you know, a slice of my life to uh, creating linkages in the city of Austin. I have a book recommendation that may very well be the answer you're looking for. Yeah, what is it? Uh, it's Unlimited Power by Anthony Robbins. Matt Speaker. Barbara, are you complete, Bart? I am, thank you. Awesome. I'm Barbara Taylor, and um, what do I do? I'm a real estate investor. I have a knack with houses. Somehow I heal houses, maybe that would be a good way to put it. And so I'm an investor in that. Um, I'm also a momentum coach. Um, I've had all of Bob Stevens' trainings, and what I've learned through his trainings is I am an excellent manifester, and um, I'm in the physical, the emotional part is, is, is it's the working personal progress. emotional. You're coming up scale in your I am. Oh, awesome. I am. And so for me to be able to explain, uh, I've been writing a series of books um, after being motivated by David in January, and they've just begun to spill out of me. Um, and they are on paper and then I stopped because the next step of how to get it from point A to point B was other than in my head and so that's why I'm here Um, so my my, I guess my talents are financial planning and real estate and uh, investments basically how that fits here I don't know and um, getting people from point A to point B other than I don't know about publishing (laughs) cool awesome my name is David Faber, and um, let's see, I'm sure other people would have descriptions of me. Um, a I, zinger, David. A zinger. zinger. Um, I went back and looked at my technical resume here recently, and I started uh, 
I started copywriting and um, uh, public speaking in 1972, I think it was. Wow. That's a long time ago. And, and uh, so I've been doing public speaking and um, uh, writing a long time. And when I say copywriting, it's more, um, I recommend more that you tell your story in your voice instead of uh, using ad speak. Anybody, who's been at the Wizard Academy besides you've been at there, right? So ad speak is like, Clint, give us a, can you give us an example of ad speak? By now, we're number one. Been in business since 83 BC. Family brighter owned and operated. <laughs> New, whiter than white, brighter than bright. Buy one, get three eight free tomorrow, maybe. Anyway, so ad speak is the, the, the monotonous stuff that when you start hearing it after about two syllables, you, your brain turns off. So tell your own story in your own words. So uh, I've been, I guess, telling my story for many years. Um, uh, the primary assistance that I'm uh, designing right now is book reviews. And anybody who's published on Amazon knows that, oh, here's a good, this is a really interesting statistic. So yesterday I had, um, Let's see how this works. Um, so, just to be clear, the, what I'm all about here is the, the purpose of publishing books on Amazon is to sell books on Amazon. So we'll, we'll be clear about that. So, you know, if you're just publishing to, to be able to tell your grandma that you published your memoir, this, you know, this is different. So the purpose of publishing on, on Kindle or Amazon to me is to sell books. And the way you sell books is reviews. The more reviews, then that causes your book to climb to the ranking and ratings. So the primary assistance I'm looking for and, and all of my projects are geared towards uh, generating reviews right now for my book. And then as I write my next book and my next book and my next book, I can cross-link them and they'll all move each other up together. Uh, so that's the my primary assistance. Uh, some additional skills I have. Um, I've been uh, working with uh, hardware and software server technology for years and years and uh, put up a, a site here recently called Crazy Fast Website. So if anybody requires uh, uh, or knows somebody that requires fast websites, that's a good uh, checklist to, to uh, go through. I've used Meetup since Meetup began and I'm like the, I don't know, the Meetup Whisperer or something. I, 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 Some would say guru. Yes. Well, I, 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 I watch the way people use Meetup and I tell them over and over and I, I'm going to do a course about Meetup. I, I, I can tell that I require to get even more granular because like uh, Mike Labanin isn't, isn't here right now, but he's got this um, thing that he's doing. I've got a copy here in my hand of, uh, for those listening, Austin All Natural. Uh, this is uh, April 2013 and on the, if you open it up, the the second page is Michael Abedin, and he's got this big um, quantum Reiki master intensive. So this is a, I mean, I read through the copy. It's good. He did a good job. He's got a testimonial from Joe Vitale here. He's got a nice graphic, although I'm unsure what a dragon has to do. Oh, Reiki of fire dragon. There you go. So he's got a tie in. So uh, Austin All Natural now goes out to about 15,000 people. It's a great place to advertise. And I just formed a meetup group um, for the Book Design Mastermind. So this, this group here is operating under the Inside Track Party, which is my old meetup group I've run for years. I started a new one because every time you start a new meetup group, they send email out to people on meetup. And I added it up and the email when the group announces, which it may announce today or tomorrow, it's going out to almost 55,000 people wow. in Austin. And how much did I pay for that? Zero. Mm -hmm. Well, I pay 144 bucks a year to be a meetup organizer. So Austin All Natural Advertising, fantastic, because that's a different set of eyes. And Meetup, I mean, if you're starting a new venture, if you'd like to do uh, idea validation, or like Lacey told, has told me just a little bit about what kind of what she's doing, and some other people, if you're, if you're writing um, and you're wondering if how your writing will be received, you can start a Meetup group around. Test your book title as the name of the Meetup. And if, you know, three people sign up and you go, hmm, maybe I can work my title. If 3,000 people si sign up and you go, well, maybe I got a good title there. And then if you'd like to try out chapters of your book or sections of a chapter, uh, form a, write up a meetup event around that topic. And if a whole bunch of people, this is basically what, I, what Ann and I talked about when she started Blend back in, when was that? 2010. So tell the story about how Blend came to be, about the conversation that you and 
Levy and I had an internet marketing party up so in the, the balcony. Internet marketing party, and I actually. What year was that? That was. Internet marketers party. Internet, uh, uh, David uh, Gonzalez. David earlier Gonzalez. that yeah. year. I that. It might have been earlier that year, or the year before. I had. Um, a so what year? What years was it? it was. Two thousand nine. Two thousand nine. Yeah, that's probably right. Mm -hmm. I had a business called the Nurses Co-op. And I was working with uh, this very traditional business coach, and he wanted me to work with a web developer who was going to charge me forty thousand dollars. Forty thousand dollars. This interactive community site that was very much like Tufts University, and apparently, you know, I, they really wanted me to connect to the nurses in the corporate system, and it was painful. I felt like I was carrying the rock of Gibraltar behind me and I wow. had this conversation with uh, David and Tim Levy and they were just like, you don't like having any fun with that. But I spent, you know, probably a good nine months with this coach and I developed such a great foundation that I changed my niche from nurses who are very slow to respond to holistic practitioners because it was it had a very strong entrepreneurship education model. And so I um, created that foundation I didn't spend forty thousand dollars on a well, and you were trying to get eighty grand worth of venture capital at the time too, if yes. I remember. Yeah. So, so instead of of getting how many how many years had you been looking for the eighty grand? About a year and a half. So eighty grand yeah. looking a year for a year and a half. How long did it take you to get your blend uh, group started? Your association started after our conversation. How much did it cost you? It probably took less than two to three months. I built the site myself um, on WordPress and I launched my meetup site and probably in two to three months after launching Blend, we had um, the large, I mean like we filled to capacity our meeting rooms, 30 to 50 people and I had a micro membership model and people were signing up for it. And um, Did I speak at the first one of your things out at the Tres Amiga or whatever? Yeah, yeah I think you were one of our first top first three to five speakers and yeah. that was actually the biggest that was the biggest meetup we had too and that well that's interesting so that tells me that that topic then Online we probably system. ought to revisit mm -hmm. uh, because there were how many people were there there was almost 45 people yeah there. so the point is it's not a possibility maybe it's the favorite name that pulled them in I think it was the title. I think it was the title was the because title I've spoken there before. We the copy. For yeah. It. You know, I, I had a I had a very systematic way of benefits results driven copy, and it was a real nice hook for people. But at the same time that we launched the Austin Holistic Chamber of Commerce launched too, and our momentum was a straighter trajectory up. And I think well, that's was, because you were one person instead of having to go through a committee to make decisions. Well, not only that, but I really utilized the power of meetup. Oh yeah. You know, and I used other people's meetups to promote our events too. So yeah, so David Gonzalez may come in later. Um, he he and I had a conversation when he was kind of uh, he'd been doing the internet marketing party for I guess about a year, and he came to uh, he came to one of our uh, meetups about meetup years ago, and he asked me what to do, and just like Ann, he said, "What do I do?" And he took out a piece of paper and he wrote, da, 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 and he wrote it down. So did Ann. He, she's like, you know, when Tim and I were talking to her, she's like, T -t 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 -t. and how, how many times did you ask for 80 grand from venture capitalists after that night? None. Zero. <laughs> My pride and ego were severely like injured oh, no. after that point in time. So anyway, David Gonzalez had a few hundred people on his internet marketing list, and I told him how to use Meetup, and within a year, it was already uh, close to 1,200, I think. Wow, that's about right. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's a very, uh, and it's a very different Meetup is a very different type of uh, collection of people. If you're, especially if you're publishing a, a Kindle book and you're looking for the, you know, bumping up reviews for your uh, whatever your book is, that's a really good place to go find people that are truly interested in your topic. If you compare that to like Google pay per click or Facebook ads, it's like throwing spaghetti on the wall. Most of the people are uninterested in what you're saying, and so they'll just uh, you know skim over it. Anyway, so I, uh, my direction to Michael, which he hasn't taken yet, was I gave him the same checklist I gave Ann and David, and I said, you know, use Austin All Natural because it, I mean it is your magazine. It's a great uh, group of people, and use Meetup too. So um, somebody's. Can I answer that check? Sure. No. Um, so uh, anyway, I guess I got a little bit off beat there. So meetups another um, uh, area of expertise for me, which is really I I, I umbrella that under tribe building. 
So David, so. will you ex explore in this class how you use a meetup so effectively? Oh, okay. So um, a little. Um, this is kind of. We'll we'll take a just a little bit of a side into meetup because I use it or abuse it. Um, very differently than the guys at Meetup. Like the guys at Meetup.com, the president of Meetup has been here twice, and I've explained to him how to use it, and he glazes over. I mean, this guy just goes catatonic because he's like, no, 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 you shouldn't use Meetup to make money. We're communists. I mean, uh, uh, community-driven. Um, so somehow the guys at Meetup.com imagine that... Um, thank you, Lacey. Uh, imagine that you're going to somehow start a meetup group and do all this community service, which is good, but you should never get paid for that. You should do that as a labor of love. But meantime, they're making millions of dollars off what you're paying them. So it's a really, these guys are twisted. Never, they're like, uh, you know, you were talking about child care. Don't take a doctor's advice for caring for your child. That's well, good not advice. Not all, all of it. Well, not all of it, but most of it. Some, most of it. There's ways you can check doctors. I've got a checklist. Well, the I questions you ask your doctors. But anyway, so anyway, the, but he's a healthcare practitioner. Yeah, for, uh, for, yeah. for Meetup, the way that I use it, it's very, very different than the concept that Meetup.com has, the, their company has, is that whatever Meetup I run, I design it, and this is the direction I gave to Ann and David and Michael also, is you design your Meetup so that it... Um, it's useful for people both in your local area and all over the world. That's probably the best advice I can give you about using Meetup. And the way that you do that is, uh, for example, there's uh, myself, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and there's a, a straggler there that's stuck in the back. So 12 people here now. Um, so if I had to, to depend on the revenue out of this room for doing this, it, I could, there's lots of other things I could do that would be worth my while if I was trading uh, hours for dollars. However, what I can do is have a hundred dollar digital recorder and record what I say and slice that up into content and also go back and use it for notes to myself to generate other products. And so uh, that particular content that we're recording right now, anybody can listen to anywhere. And it can be used in all sorts of different ways. And you sell that. You have the link. Mm. Oh, yeah. So that. there's a link. So when somebody buys it, you get a kickback, right? So yeah, I bought from Amazon. Your, I bought the... Um, nice. And nice. And yes, when I read your book, I said, oh, I got to have that. So I went to the link, bought it, and you get, a, I don't know what you get, something. Yeah. Uh, so another important thing when you're writing Kindle books is make sure that you're embedding if you talk about, and I, I made this mistake, I wrote the first edition of the book, and actually I, I was up to about edition four or five, and I thought, wait a minute, I'm talking about all these products on Amazon, dole, I, I better go back and put those in as links instead of just saying, you know, the Tascam, whatever this is, DR, uh, 2D digital recorder, I go back and put a link in there. So when people click through, and this is something, did you catch that little comment that Johnny made on the recording? Yeah, you just have to be careful too. You don't want it to just be a, a link farm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it should be a link farm. But it's got to be a real book, but you can link in there. Just don't have like every page with two or three links on. Right. So the so the point that Johnny was making, um, which I'll talk about PPS here. I guess it'd probably be a good thing to talk about too. And. Um, Johnny Andrews and Hollis Carter are the guys that put together the content for the perfect publishing system. And Johnny was saying he was checking his Amazon um, affiliate account the other day. And he said he, he has only realized recently that if, if somebody, for example, reads my beautiful business book and they read, like you read the section about Nison, mm -hmm. and click on the link, that uh, gives them a 24-hour, or that gives you a 24-hour cookie that points to me. So, did you buy anything else besides Nice? No. Okay, so she, you just. Oh, you mean after you, that? You did oh. buy other things, right, in that I'm session? I'm not sure. If you did, though, like Johnny. Then you would get the 20. Yeah, so, so Johnny's saying, like, yeah, somebody read my book the other day, and I'm like looking, and like, I got like uh, somebody bought some cutlery and pots and pans, and somebody bought a refrigerator. Refrigerator. Yeah. I was like, I ain't talking about refrigerators. So he said, the point is, is to make sure anything you talk about that people can acquire off Amazon, put the link in, so that that will um, give people a quick way 
to go from your book to there and so that they have the cookie from you. And at the bottom you. it says, and they also bought these things at the bottom. Yeah, and also so, it's a... Yeah, Postman bought that, bought this, and so then that, so then you, I, I don't think I bought anything else. It was late at night, but... Yeah, so that's an interesting... Thankfully, um, we're here in Texas where that's, we get payouts versus, what are six or seven states that... And all that's yeah. done now. Um, so Amazon, it used to be that there were some states that uh, you couldn't get paid uh, Amazon affiliate, but they've settled their disagreement with all the taxing authorities. They were, mm. It was all about sales tax, but they're right. collect. You notice it's Amazon's all about sell- government greed. But yeah, it's all, it, Amazon's collecting sales tax now. They started about what three months ago or four or something like that. Sales tax per state. Well, per taxing jurisdiction, which is different than state, it's okay. really complicated. Which, by the way, if you're selling physical products, sell them on Amazon and just completely bypass all that. Mm-hmm. Um, we're moving all our products to Amazon now, uh, physical products, because it, it's just so simple. Mm-hmm. You send them a pallet full of stuff, they put it in boxes, they sell it, they deal with writing the tax checks to all the taxing jurisdictions, of which in California there are 150. Oh which don't match the county lines. Right. So you have to know a GPS coordinate for a house to know what taxes you have to pay. It's ridiculous. But anyway, better that Amazon... Why that, would they take on that kind of fulfillment headache, I wonder? Amazon? Yeah. Yeah. Market share. Or something, don't they? For well, cashola. For sure, but it just seems like such a headache. To yeah. 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 So they've got the scale to be able to do. Yeah. Quick question regarding the, the affiliates. Are you saying that John said then that anything that the person bought then? Well, within 24 hours. Okay. You get anything it? on the website. If you're anything. the first click. Because somebody, you might click somebody else just before you. Uh, yeah, so if you go through another link for somebody else, as I understand the cookie system in Amazon, whoever's uh, link you click through last is the cookie that ap- applies to the next 24 hours of sales. Oh, really? Yeah. Unless they add an item to their uh, cart and don't check out. Then it, in that case, it's a 90 day cookie that's associated with you. 90 day cookie? Yeah. Wow. So, with that item? <laughs> with that item and you. Okay, wow. Yeah. Huh. So um, uh, that's that's a useful uh, a so useful bit. About meetup, did you want to say anything else about meetups? Oh yeah. So just to wrap up on meetup, just make sure that um, uh, unfortunately, or well, it, the way meetup works is there's no way to tell where a person is in the world. There's no way to say only send this stuff like about Austin meetups to these people and newsletters to both people in Austin and the U.S. and this to this, 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 there's no way to segment a list. So the rule with meetup is if you'd like to appeal to a global audience, just make sure every uh, email that you send out to your list on your meetup group has something of value for them. And the way I do that is, first thing, I turn off all of the RSVP announcements for every event. Uh, in, uh, usually, I tried it. The, uh, I, I'm doing some experiments with leaving it on for certain things. In general, though, I turn that off. Why? Because if somebody's in Auckland, New Zealand, they don't care about a meetup in Austin. So instead, what I what I target doing is like every week or two, I'll send out a newsletter and says, you know, if you if you are know somebody in or near Austin, you know, if you can attend and bring a friend. And if not, catch the recordings afterward. If you're outside Austin, then just pick up the recordings when they publish. So that's something for everybody. Really important. Um, especially like if you'd like to take your practice, like you have a practice and Ann's got a practice. Um, I added up a few years ago what my revenue was from uh, Austin for my one-on-one consulting practice when I was running a health cl- a clinic. And less than 1% came from Austin. Ninety-nine percent of my client consultation income came, and also our product income comes from outside Austin. So that's really important when you're designing your entire, like your your uh, topic about. Um, I was going to look at your ad here. Uh, your topic about uh, uh, anger. So see, you, like I'm looking at uh, this is page 19 of April 2013, Austin All Natural again. I'm looking at Bart Sharp's uh, ad in the top right corner, and the top line says "Release anger, traumas, limitations permanently." Those are all features; mm-hmm. they're not benefits. What do I get? What do I get when I got no anger? Mm. Right? How does my cell metabolism change? 
How does my uh, relationship with my wife change? You know, things like that. Yeah. So a simple thing is uh, also when you're designing your meetup messaging to people on your groups is, and in, even in your Kindle books too. Kindle books, any book you write should be um, high quality content that is valuable to people reading. They ain't sales ads, you know, no, rather than, um, you know, like, it's not like uh, the huckster, the ad speak hucksters that Clint and I were talking about a minute ago. It, it's, you know, find something um, that is, that, that first off, that you've mastered, that you found valuable for yourself. And I, I tell you, use the 10 year rule, which I talk about in Beautiful Businesses, whatever you've done almost every day for the last 10 years without pay, likely you'll do for the next year, 10 years, almost every day without pay. Mm -hmm. That's something you know about. You know far more about that than anybody else. So that's what you're best served to write about. Not, you know, you get some uh, random internet marketing, you know, mm. message that says, you know, if you buy my, I don't know, what's selling these days? What's, what's people, who, Shecky, what's, um, what's There's being pushed in the internet market? Jeff Johnson just did his launch, YouTube uh, traffic. Uh, YouTube launch monster or something, yeah. Yeah, whatever. So, okay, so we'll call it the YouTube launch monster. So, yeah. My story is that you, your greatest service to all humankind it ain't selling the YouTube Monster Blaster or whatever it is. No, it's talking about what happens in your life when a person is able to transmute their anger into what? Something. And then that transmutation of anger into courage or peace or whatever, then that creates a set of benefits in a person's um, physical body and their etheric body and their feeling body and their mental body. So that's that's what you ought to write about. And that's why you ought to change your ad uh, messaging too. So people know, oh man, I'd like, I'd like to feel better. Yeah. You know, feel like crap. I don't know if that's, you know, that might be too much. No, you no, know, I, 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 get, I get what you're saying. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, if you feel awful all the time, maybe it's because dot, 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 and then you don't put it in the ad, you say, um, uh, read the Kindle book, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a great so way to test. Feel and have more energy in your life. There you go. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So uh, just in general with Meetup, make sure that you uh, create all your messaging so that it there's value for everybody independent of what their time zone is or where they live or if they can, even if they're in Austin and they can't, and they're busy and they're unable to attend a, a Meetup, I still like to provide something of value. So... That's the that's the trick for using media. Thanks. So, I really welcome. like what you did with this um, book design mastermind. That you was quite it. sneaky. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, okay, I okay liked so it. so Anne is going to expose <laughs> the behind the scenes of what I did this time. So tell them what well, you noticed. I've, I've seen different things that you've used with media, especially when you did this one thing with Tim Levy, where before people could come and attend this thing, you had to fill out this long question which was an abysmal flaw it wasn't a well it, it was, was an experiment it was a really <laughs> long questionnaire and it was a way of um what was it fine tuning or setting the criteria standards of the kind of people you want to come i really like the m much more easy use of this it was very direct granted the link didn't work the first time but and and call, and called me and said you know one of your links isn't working that's good so it was really nice because then when you click on the link, it takes you straight to that Amazon page. Mm -hmm. um, it was really effective. I like that. Did one. you notice the trick about the RSVPs too? Who noticed the I trick? I noticed about you said this is going to be the only notification of this, and I'm going to put it on my calendar. But this, I'm not going to be reminded of this, so I need to do it. Hey, did you notice what I said about the RSVP? So anybody who RSVPs yes or no, or no. gets a recording. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, so the point is, uh, so if you have a global community, um, there's a, a whole science of what's called microaction uh, management. And microactions means that if a person takes any type of action with you, um, independent of what that is, like Lacey and Bobby have, have come to a whole bunch of meetups that my wife is doing around a specific topic, Every time they come and visit, they are taking a, well, substantial, they're taking a macro action of uh, participating in that topic. So a couple of things. First off, I'm forming a relationship with them around that topic. 
and our trust is, you know, every increment of interaction we have, our trust goes up and up. I know Bobby and Lacey better, they know me, and we can judge our energetic signature over and over and over every time we have interactions. And we make, you know, choices and have uh, considerations with each other around our experience of each other. Micro actions in this, in this context with Meetup is, for example, if Anne was going to grow her blend group to more of a global, which I recommend Anne, you do. Totally going back online, <coughs> underground, global. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, global, global, global. Yeah, go global. global. Anyway, so the way, that, the way that you create a set of micro actions with your entire community is, if you'd like this um, uh, recording for this whatever it is, then I'm going to send out the recordings to everybody that RSVPs yes or no. And, please, and that also means that um, that encourages people that are, are out of town too, rather than saying RSVP yes to take up a spot. Like I used to say, you know, if you come, I'll yeah. send you a recording. And then I got, you know, 30 people from Chiang Mai, Thailand, RSVP and yes. Well, they ain't coming. Right. Mm -hmm. I, at least I'm imagining that they're probably, you know, I know the people there and I know all those guys and they like being in Chiang Mai way better than being here. So I changed it to say RSVP yes, you know, if you're coming and no if you'd like a copy of the recording. That also tells me out of my entire list, if my if our list, uh, my audience or tribe or meetup group really is interested in my topic, or I better instead of uh, hitching my wagon to that star, I better go out and get me a new star, right? So you might find in your blend group that your current membership, you know, you require to get a whole new group of membership. Yeah, yeah, especially if most of them are local, and I'm looking at a larger global market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the, there are lots of tricks to use in Meetup. Let, let me really quickly talk about uh, uh, a couple of Kindle resources because the the Kindle the terrain of Kindle publishing is so vast and it changes so uh, dramatically. Like a couple of changes over the past few days is that uh, whenever you publish an edition update, like you change typos or add new content to an existing book. Used to be it took about three days to get that update propagated through Amazon. Now it's taken, they told me, over four weeks. Yeah. So that's good to know. Also, uh, Amazon has started taking books that are less than 2,500 words, Barbara, mm -hmm. right, and throwing them out. <laughs> Well, they, they, you'll get an email that says your book is uh, your your book has, fails to meet the Amazon quality standards. Um, I think is that there's something about um, well here I can tell you the exact um, notification they send out. It's I haven't uh, gotten a notification like this, but a couple of other people have, and it's good to know. In fact, uh, one of the things you ought to do is make sure that you're really paying attention to your email from Kindle. Uh, there is. So you can't do pamphlets anymore? Uh, no. You can, just as long as your pamphlets are over 2,500 words. 2,501. So, so here's the message you'll get. Yeah, totally up into 3,000. You'll, you'll get a message that says, Kindle Quality Notice, and you'll get your book name and then the AIS number. And um, when you get a quality notice from Amazon, then that's about... Um, that has something to do with, usually, it has to do with formatting in your book. And I'm guessing that that's the same message they'll send for if your book's too short. Um, so just really pay attention when you start publishing with Kindle. There are messages, you'll, you'll get these goofy messages from, let's say, about your Kindle inquiry. Well, which one? I made 18 in the last month. And then you have to go and read it. And it's, it's really complicated because a lot of times they don't really reference your other email either. So it's you have to read those and you have to figure out how to interact with Kindle based on what you're doing with them. So it's interesting. The joys of dealing with conglomerates. Yeah. So um, the perfect publishing system is a system that um, Clint and I have been using well ever since it released. And yeah. I get a year now. I man, I give it. You know, if there's six stars, we get yeah. add an extra star for that one. Um, there's a lot of elementary programs as I would describe them, and then that's like your. PhD level. Yeah, there's several different kind of styles of Kindle publishing courses. There's the elementary courses that really have some useful information in them. Uh, and then there's um, Perfect Publishing System. I have, have yet to come across a system that's as complete as it is. And then there's all the others of some 
which we won't name the names out loud in case some of those guys are listening to this recording, um, a lot of um, Kindle publishing courses right now, if you do what they tell you to do, if you publish a single book, you'll, or if you get a single sale, you'll be lucky. Mm-hmm. And they've got, a, they've got a solution for that, though. Uh, a if, a if you have, sale? Yeah, if you happen to have problems uh, implementing our, everything you've learned in our course, we can provide you with some very high-dollar coaching. <laughs> or we've got some tools to make your cover, which, by the way, that a lot of people are, are selling cover tools and book generation tools that if you use them, the likelihood that you'll be able to even stay in Amazon is unlikely and even make a sale is unlikely. So that, there's a lot of those people and Hollis and Johnny are just a, they're a completely different breed. And I, you know, they were going to do another launch on that and open it again, but... They need to, to get some fresh blood, some interviews, well, some reviews. The challenge is they're making so much money, they've got like, I think, close to 80 titles in the top bestseller list in Amazon now. And they've lost interest right. because when you sell a course like this, then you have to do customer support and you have to explain to newbies how to use it. Mm-hmm. So, so um, the system's no longer available. Well, is what you're saying? it might be. Okay. <laughs> these are the people that spoke at Internet Marketing Party, like yeah, Alice and, and Johnny. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they they yeah, talked yeah, about yeah, it. That was hot. Um, and so uh, back uh, when they were first doing their launch, their launch sequence of you had to go through this like two-hour webinar before you could even get to buying the product. And I'm like, dudes. Nobody I know, they don't want to listen to you talk. They just like to buy it. So I had them set up a link for me, and it's working. I checked it the other day. And the link is uh, davidsfavor.com slash PPS. And that, as long as it works, it works. And when it stops working, it stops working. So uh, if you'd like a copy of it, you can do that. And if you go to davidsfavor.com slash PPS slash webinar, it's their actual front-end you know, recording of the front end webinar they used to do. Mm -hmm. And I checked those links and they were working yesterday. (laughs) They will work (laughs) as long as, you know, nobody there notices that new copies are selling and they've got new people they've got to support. Eventually, I suspect that those links will disappear. And anybody who's a member of the Internet Marketing Party, um, there were a lot of video, there's a lot of video footage taken on their presentation, some of their techniques. Mm -hmm. So we'll go back and watch Well, that. and you're better served to use the current course because they update the course when stuff changes. Six months ago in, in um, Kindle days and Amazon publishing days is like a decade. Well, how the heck do you, like, okay. So what you have to do is you have to keep, you have to keep up with um, the content that changes in perfect public system. They'll tell you, you know, oh, we found that this no longer works, so we replaced the video. Or, like Johnny did a webinar, he does webinars every it's really ad hoc maybe every you know, quarter <laughs> yeah maybe you know well it's, yeah, it's he's doing about one or two a month now i mean if if you really watch closely and and there a lot of them he'll say yeah i decided to do a webinar tomorrow so you know you gotta freaking watch your mail or you're right. like well missed that one uh, luckily he does replays uh and he'll what they do is since they're they're basically a publishing house and so as they publish they learn things every day and when they figure out, well, I ain't working, like there was a technique that no longer works. And he's like, all right, before everybody gets all bunched up about this thing not working. Oh, is that the pulsing? Yeah, the pulsing. Yeah, so, it. you know, instead of doing it this way, now you have to make these slight refinements. And, you know, it took 30 or 45 minutes to explain. The problem is if you use the old way, you get this result. And if you make these slight refinements, then you get the expected results. So that's really good. I mean, these guys are actually using their, the other guys, of which many we won't mention their names, they churn out product and churn out product and they never go updated because they never use it. Mm-hmm. So the thing about Perfect Publishing is Johnny and Hollis, their business is publishing books. And so you can use the Perfect Publishing system. I think the last time I checked it was, I think it was like 600 bucks or something. Or you can go to them and it'll cost you 60 grand. Wow. Now the well, reason they're they, doing it smart too because they're building lists where they can actually sell your books. Oh yeah, so unlike most publishers. Yeah, if you go, if you go to a publisher and uh, you get like you know some advance, some minuscule advance, um, and then you're locked in with them, that's different than Johnny and Hollis because what they do is they also they take the uh, percentage of the profits. And they, like one book, I think I heard, well, maybe I shouldn't say this because I think that was on a conversation I had with Johnny. Anyway, it was a multi-million dollar um, in a two-year period they made off one single Kindle, not physical, 
one single Kindle title. <laughs> and they've got 80, I think 80 titles now they're working with. So the point is, you know, if you got 60 grand, you go and just say, hey dudes, uh, here's my money, take, take it away. And the way they do it is what, did you notice what Clint said a minute ago is that you don't have to write to be a writer? I don't know if anybody, anybody right. catch that? Right. Mm -hmm. So the way you, you do it is with one of those recorders right there. And you use, I, I take, like I'll take this recording and um, uh, send it to a, everybody know Fiverr.com? Yes, sure. Fiverr.com. F-I-V-E-R-R.com. Say it again. Fiverr with another R on the end dot com. What is Fiverr. Fiverr. Yeah. They get five dollars. Yeah. So what do, what I do is I take my audios and I send them to Fiverr and for five dollars I can have a fifteen to twenty minute recording trans um, you know transcribed into text. What? <clears throat> and so you know I've talked to a lot of people and they're paying you know a hundred dollars an hour for for transcriptions. Oh, yeah. 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 You have to pay more than fifteen or twenty. I was hour. doing a consulting session with somebody yesterday, and they were like, "Well, you know, one of the the things that's holding us up is the our transcription to take you know a hundred dollars an hour, and it takes like like a week or two turnaround." I'm like, "Dude, no! <laughs> I get twenty minutes for five dollars, and I get it back tomorrow." So. Now this file will be longer than 20 minutes, and it, you can send the big Yeah, file. so in Fiverr, you, they, they have what are called gigs. Each gig's $5, so a gig might be like 10 minutes of transcribing, or, or 15, or 20. One of my favorite, if you'd like to have like a, in fact, I should put that in my book as an eclectic input thing. Uh, if you'd like some serious eclectic input, go just to the home page of Fiverr and just any random time and scan the top whatever has been That's listed hilarious. in the last. Yeah, it's really mind opening to see all the different you stuff that you can do. You get a little kid to sing your mother a Happy Mother's Day song for yeah. five bucks or something like that. Yeah, or my, like, some of my favorites are I'll be your uh, stalker girlfriend and do like you know abusive YouTube videos saying how bad you are, <laughs> and you know it's funny because you can use that in marketing sequences. Or my other favorite one, my all-time favorite one was, I will take your logo or any any word up to 15 characters long and write it in string cheese, and for $5, my dog will lick it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're, looking, if you're broke and you gotta have some money and you got a dog and can you know walk to your local store to get some string cheese, you can you know maybe make enough by the end of the day to eat. I mean, there's some really creative people on there. Uh, it's yeah. just it's fascinating. Yeah. I go just sometimes just scan Fiverr and look for random ideas. I hired um, this random guy to do this SEO analysis of one of my sites, not because I thought he was good, but because I enjoyed the comic relief of his post, which was like a glamour shot picture of him and this really fluffy cat. So there was a picture of him and there's this fluffy cat looking in the background like a, of a silhouette. And it was an SEO had analysis? Nothing to do with SEO analysis, but I had such a great time laughing and I was like, that was worth five dollars of my enjoyment. <laughs> What's the, do you know the guys? Uh, send, just, send me the guys, drop it in our Scott session what the guy's it, idea is. When he did an SEO analysis of Blend, there was like 433,000 reasons why it wasn't, there was like SEO, like a bomb. And I looked at it and I was like, I don't even know what to do with this. <laughs> oh, okay. great cat! Great but cat, though. To, to finish, well, just to finish his thought, because you were asking about what if it goes over five minutes or ten minutes. Oh yeah, the way that you can do that, like in the transcription model, is you can just buy an extra gig. Most of these people that are doing providers will tell you, "I'm going to do ten minutes of X." So if you need 20 minutes or 30 minutes, it's you just, just buy two, two or three gigs, gigs. Yeah. Yeah. and you just send them a note saying, hey, this is just a continuation and it's done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Super easy. And you'll find, I mean, um, you'll do uh, experiments with people and you'll find the people that you like to work with. Mm -hmm. Another really interesting thing to do that um, I have, I've yet to do it, but somebody's telling me about this the other day. They were saying, uh, um, yeah, you know, I'm doing my logos now. I said, no, how are you doing your logos now? I said, well, I kind of write out some ideas about what I'd like, you know, maybe a little bit about the color scheme, what the wording is. Then I go buy a hundred Fiverr gigs, just randomly buy for $500, five, you know, a hundred different Fiverr gigs. And then I take, you know, sometimes there's one in there that I'll just use. And if there's two or three that I um, really like, I'll take those two or three as an example and I'll send them back to the guys that I liked. Like if there were five guys of five logos, I said, well, here's five examples of the logos that I like the best, mash them up. 
you know, take the ideas from all of them, and, and then he goes back to the five of those people, and he says, "Man, I get logos for you know, five hundred bucks now, and they're awesome." Mm. Seems like he could use that strategy with ninety nine designs and get similar. Yeah, ninety nine designs is another. You yeah. offer a prize of three hundred bucks, and people all around the world, sometimes hundreds of them, submit their mm. their work. Okay. Yeah, mm. and you pick the winner. Dot com. Yeah, ninety nine designs dot com. Mm. Plural designs. Okay. Yes, plural. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to scan through the the questions here right quick, um, the things that people said they were looking for. Uh, Shecky said uh, Kindle lead gen. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, uh, the best way to do Kindle lead gen is when you're inside your book, make sure you've got some sort of way for them to connect. Like if you notice through My Beautiful Business, I'm like, you know, join the tribe, join the tribe. You know, if you'd like more information, da, 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 all sorts of, you know, there's all sorts of ways or reminders for people. Please go and join this. Um, this meetup. Now, shortly, I'll change that, and in a in a edition that'll come out in the future, I'm going to route them directly to a, a some sort of email capture system. Uh, but for right now, meetup is so simple, right? Like if you if you're having challenges like getting your head about around, how do I get a website up and running? Forget it. Just go set up a meetup group because the whole point of a website is so you publish things and you have people come, and that's all done on meetup. Well, what, I, what I'm doing out of the gate, and I, again, I'm just releasing the book, so I don't have any test data yet. Mm-hmm. Is uh, you know, it's in the dating relationship niche. So I, what I'm doing is saying, hey, look, if you want to get some more insights, I'm going to give you kind of basically the insight into my personal diary. I'm going to tell you all these little dating war stories. And so, uh, yeah. you know, if you want to find out more about it, just go to theexperienceman.com forward slash diary. And then that just takes them basically to a squeeze page and they put their email address. You in. know what I would do instead? I would, yeah, go ahead. I would I'd do that. It. I would say, um, if you'd like to keep up with my diaries, are you publishing them? these as an ongoing? Mm-hmm. Okay. So then what you do is you publish up to like 20,000 words goes in volume one, and then you start volume two. And 20,000 words goes in that, and then you volume three. And so everything, your diary, everything is um, in a Kindle book format that people buy. And what you capture their email for is you say, if you'd like me to send you an update, because Amazon's really bad about this, of when a new version of my book comes out, just add your name to the list. So there's no, you know, there's no, it's like, a, it's an afterthought. Like, yeah, you know, if you like the book and you like well, to know when new ones come out. But the, the, the intent there was to use that as a true lead gem in, in the fact that as I go through telling each of these st- dating stories, there's lessons in there that lead to courses that I'm selling. But you put that in your Kindle books. Might as well turn it into a, uh, to a money maker. See, most people don't realize that there's nothing you can do possibly on your site um, that will generate traffic like Amazon will. So if you try to route people out of one Kindle book to your site with the idea that that's going to be useful, I mean, it will be to a certain degree. But on the other hand, if you take that Kindle book and link it to another Kindle book, and then this Kindle book links to this one and this one and this one to this one, and you expand that ecosystem inside, and the only thing you use your site for is back-end courseware. Mm -hmm. And you plug that from inside your books. Like, you know, if you're having challenges... You know, like one of the things I tell people when they're you know trying to find their partner these days is start a meetup group. Mm-hmm. Pick all the qualifications you require for your. Uh, I see Anne's got a for face. A partner? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So for your perfect guy, whoever that is, you've got certain spiritual requirements, physical practices, the way their brain works, how they interact with children. Uh, you roll all that up into something into some sort of meetup group. And the people that join are <laughs> who? Your perfect guy, right? And it's like, that's, well, that's simple. That's good fishing right there. I kind of did that. Yeah, that's a that's I, saw, I, saw a woman, I saw a woman do something I thought was the most brilliant um, uh, thing that I've ever that's seen. Great. And she did this kind of the same meetup thing. But she did was uh, quick cooking for bachelors. Hmm. Oh. 100 bucks a head. Oh. So guys oh. paid her $100 for a group date. And she was making like, she had like 20, 30 guys come to these things. New guys every time. So yeah. she was making, what is that, three grand for a group date that lasted three or four hours. And then she knew which one of these guys she'd like to go out with. That's or not. Brilliant. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. Did you like that, Lacey? 
Lace is like, yeah, I know how to fix food. Hmm. Look what you ate! Evil scheme. Yeah, so that's a that's a really oh, good. So, I've got other so uh, when you refer to these Kindle lead generations, and you're talking about adding links. Yeah, you're, and you're saying things like that. The ecosystem what you're saying is that it something. works. What I see that is it works better when it's nonfiction. And no, it's more, not necessarily. I'm, I'm, you know what I'm creating. Because we talk about your fiction, fiction book. So inside your fiction book, you got rabid fans. Yeah, since I, inside your fiction book, uh, is it? Do you have a working title that you're open to share, or do I have a working title? Yeah, for your book. Yeah, it's actually called the root. Okay. Uh, actually, the Latin word is radix. Radix, yeah, for radix, radix, radix yeah. or radicalis, which it's, is the root of radical health. Yeah, radix. It's yeah. called yeah. discovering yeah. power. So it's really about a power building series because the first root chakra is about discovering your power. The second is cultivating power. So you could do easy, all, you yeah. could do all you could do sorts like, of uh, sample chapters. Hey, when I oh, I wouldn't even think. No, I wouldn't think. No, 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 no. You, you, the way you make money off that is link to other products on Amazon. So for example, say that yeah. you'd like to, like you've got a chapter in there about um, you know setting up a. Boy, I'm really going out on a limb now. Um, setting up a spiritual boudoir, which would have like you know maybe you talk a little bit about feng shui. Right. Like when you when you set up your boudoir, you'd like that to add to the energy of the the couple, right? Rather than depleting their energy. So you know you so for example you wouldn't put your you're, you wouldn't organize the room where the the, the head uh, is facing the door. Yeah, or you know, you've got your uh, abundance in your um, <clears throat> you know the wrong. You you have to arrange your room. Right. So to do that, um, <clears throat> you talk you talk about this woman trying to figure out how to do her spiritual boudoir, and she says, "Well, I don't know how to do that. So I'm going to go to Amazon and find just the right book." <laughs> Apologize too much. Anyway, so yeah, as I, I went through and I found all these, you know, um, these books, and then I found this one that was obviously a a um, uh, translation of an ancient text because I remembered some of the wording from this old manuscript I wrote or this old codex. I and mean, you turn that into a story too. It's like right. you turn it. You have stories with. It's like Don Quixote. Don Quixote has three layers of stories. You have a story within a story within a story. And so make stories within your story. So part of each chapter could be almost like a scavenger hunt right. to build something yeah, that serves so. the people, the woman and the man's relationship that, that takes that to a higher spiritual level. And here are the accoutrements you use to do that. And you can get them off Amazon. It's like, you know, it's like, you know, she's coming into a room. She's looking at the placement. And she's like, oh, my God, he's going to be here in an hour. I've got to move these things. But, you know, I've, I have to first move this book. By my nice stand, which is how to design your room yeah, for right. better oh, love, that's, that's which perfect. is linked to the Amazon page of that book. Got it, man. That's pretty brilliant. You're that, sneaky. That's that's a well. It's the it's the old ET. You remember the old movie ET where they're yeah. spreading M and M's. You know, M and M's were almost bankrupt. That whole business what? entity. Until E.T. and this guy, you know, the the kid is, what was he, like, streaming M&M's out of the bicycle, flying up across the moon, and they're eating M&M's all through the movie. M&M's, the, 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 the number of sales after that movie released the first day skyrocketed. Audi. Here's a good example. Audi, that book, Fifty Shades of Grey. The main vehicles that they oh, have this is out are really? Audis, Audis. I haven't been able to bring myself to read that one. Don't. It's, it's really quite good. You'll want to read it again. Oh, but no. the thing is, is ever <laughs> since read I read again. that book... You haven't read it once, you'll want to read it ever again. Ever since I read that book, I have seen an explosion of Audis. Audis. Like crazy. Oh, that's and interesting. And that, that particular vehicle is getting a plug like crazy because he says multiple times, it's the safest car. Uh -huh. It's the safest car. So I wonder how, and much, I'm like, she's, how oh. much royalty she's getting from Audi for she should get a pretty in fat thing Well, she's self one of the things you can think about too is once you build an audience up to a certain point, then guess what? There are places you can go to negotiate. If you'd like to talk, he said you could go to you know whoever the broker is for Audi placements and say, look, I have noticed an increase in Audi sales since it's mentioned in Fifty Shades of Grey. Well, I could do the same thing for you. How much will you give me? Yeah. You ask, nothing venture, nothing gain. Right. right, especially when they make the movie. 
it's going to be very big sponsorship. But yeah. Yeah. So that's you know for your roots book that would be um, uh, a really interesting. The other thing you could do, I'm knowing you and you have a, a really strong spiritual practice is the other thing I definitely integrate into my book is to actually build a um, an altar using the you know whatever um, icons or um, mm -hmm. focus, focuses that you use mm -hmm. and what you'll find is somebody may come to you and say wow and holy smokes I read about your altar mine looks the same now where do you think they're going to go on your list of people to go out with mm. At the top, yeah. Right. It's interesting when you put things like that in your writing, you'll find people that That's so instantly good that you connect say that because with you. It's actually in the book. Yeah. I mean, the book's written, and cool. it talks about the altar that she builds and all the resources that come and support mm -hmm. her in that. Awesome. So I didn't realize that you know it might actually be a good idea to focus on certain details like that. The other thing that you could add as a back end, like Shecky was talking about other additional um, ways to monetize your books is that after they're published is a, another um, service that you might render is uh, in, I mean, you could even work it in as part of the storyline of, you know, this woman, you, you know, she has her special like secret black book of resources. Mm -hmm. And oh, by the way, that's, you know, the appendix A in the back of this book. And you put in there one of the things is, you know, if you'd like um, assistance building an altar in your house, um, you know, for a couple of hundred bucks, you can take pictures of your, you know, yard and your house and your room and you can send it to me and I'll tell you what I would do. Hmm. I don't know. Not, you know, nothing venture, nothing gain. If you, right. you might find that if that's... See, the thing about all this is that is if your if you're karma and dharma, whatever your spiritual path is that you're meant to serve people in a certain way, then all you're required to do is put it out there and spirit will arrange, well, it's getting kind of metaphysical here, but anyway, spirit will arrange for people to find you and you have to give the call. Mm -hmm. If you're quiet, ain't nobody gonna know you can build altars in a room and set up a beautiful metaphysical boudoir. Mm -hmm. If you write it in your book and in the back of the book you say, and this is something that I've done for people, for myself for years and I'm, I've done it for other people for years, or if that's you know yet to be true, then you say, and I'm beginning to do it for people now, whatever, you tell the truth. And it may be that that's, um, you know, the spiritual currents in the universe are like building up energy and they're waiting for you to unleash the, the floodgates. Yeah. And the way you do that is by exposing uh, what your, um, you know, what you can share with people. Because I mean, you've seen you've seen our bedroom, right? The work that you might have done on our altar. Mm -hmm. If not, we'll I'll have to show you. I like to see Maybe we'll take a quick tour. Um, David, yes. When you were talking, um, telling Shecky, I think some hybrid between their model will work for me. But I wanted to understand a little bit better your advice that you gave Shecky. Well, well Shecky's great. I mean, his back end content. What I would do is I would take all the written content and move it to Kindle so it all monetizes and also is all it continually expands. So rather than doing blog posts or on site content that's written, have that all as Kindle books, a series. And then in the back is consulting or coaching or you know whatever other courseware that you have. So how do you jump from the Kindle um, ecosystem? So you talked about building the Kindle ecosystem by interlinking all of your materials. Well, you jump to there by saying uh, you you know if you'd like to keep up with uh, other project other related projects, you know, be sure and add yourself. Uh, and you can also um, like. Um, Another trick I'll do is I'll write a, a chapter and I'll say, well, you know, I'm, I've got to get this thing published and I'm going to write some more here. So just make sure that you join the group and I'll, you know, and I'm going to start sending out updates to say, you know, when Amazon actually makes the update available, now update 13 or 14 or 15 is available. Okay. Yeah. So Join the tribe. So cliffhanger, join yeah. the tribe. No. Yeah. Cliffhanger, yeah. I join have, the tribe. I have a question along the lines of Amazon's policies as to, or they're seeing your activity of how many books you're publishing. Let's just say I've got the materials to publish as many as 200 relevant books, each interlinking with each other. And I want to, let's say, as an algorithm for less than maybe 20 minutes a day, publish one book a day that's over, let's just say, the 2,500. Yeah, a lot of people, my, my goal is to get to where I'm publishing one a week. And, and, you know, if you have a team, to do one a day, you really require a team of people. 
Why do you say that? Because it takes some time to do. You can't just like magically have a book appear on Amazon. It take you. There's a whole checklist you have to yeah. go through to have that occur. And it takes, you know, realistically to, to write a book a day, you're going to have the writing time and then the time to format it, the time to make sure that the formatting is correct, then the time to update it. And then you've got to have the time to track it when that update is available to your old customers. So it's a, it's a, you know, to do one a day, I mean, I know people, like I know a group of people, they're, they're a 10 team, 10 person team, and they're currently publishing a book every 10 to 12 days now. And their goal is to get that down to one a day. Wow. And the books they're publishing, though, are in the 10,000 to 15,000 word range. Dang. So, I mean, they're not just like, you know, like, oh, I read, I saw this camera on Amazon and thought I'd write a, you know, 20 word summary about it. Well, People used to do that, and that's well, why Amazon's throwing those out now. Well, the reason why I was thinking that, I've got all of this content I still need to curate from all these meetups I've been at, mm -hmm. relevant to these different strategies, these different stories, yeah, so these that's different a perfect learning lessons that you know link in my industry of helping people who are looking to conquer their computer, conquer technology in general. Just conquer the computer. Exactly. Yeah. There's millions really of people that feel like that. Exactly. And, 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 and well, there's millions. Um, it's actually everybody, if you just have to word it just right. And, uh, but I've narrowed down an inch. But um, my question then, along those lines then, not publishing, you know, so much. And um, So, going back to when you said formatting, so when I think of an ebook, I'm thinking of, okay, I'm going to go into my Microsoft Word. I do, let's say, about 40 pages, 20,000 words, or I, I format the words just the right script, the right, the right, the right, I do it like, uh, I'll do, I would do a combination of times Roman numeral at uh, 12, and, but then format it where it looks, it looks like you would read a book from in person or as best as I can then try to formulate that. And I guess it's been my first struggles getting Yeah, that, so in that, that right. piece of it, that is, that piece of it is the same piece that Barbara has, and that's the piece that I've worked on for months now. And I'm, I, it's a longer conversation than we have today, and I'm going to talk more about that in the future. The tool that I use is a text-based tool that takes, um, do you know what things like textile and markup, markdown and multi markup and all hey, those are? Okay, no, no, say it, slow down. Text well, what? so there's a whole set of micro languages that are text based languages that let you do things like say, if I'd like to generate an HTML or an H1 title tag, I say in my text, equal space and the title. I don't go and try to figure out what the font is. I don't try to figure out what the color is, what the HTML is, none of that stuff. I say equal space, beautiful business, uh, living well, doing what you love. That's the whole title. And then I write my whole book like that, and there are different sorts of um, textual markup that you use. It's very simple, so you can write a book a day very easily with that. And then the tool you use to take that and generate your book then determines what the actual output of that book is that you upload in the Kindle. If you try to do this with Microsoft Word, they've already said that in the future, be ready, they'll stop accepting .doc and .pdf files. Hmm. So don't build your system around Microsoft Word and Acrobat. So you build it in text now? Well, no, I, I, that's just What's an example. What's the format that they're looking for to book in? Uh, the only format that they'll eventually accept is KF8, which is their... It's K, F, and then 8. 8, the number 8. Not EPUB? No. They've already said Mobi and EPUB is dead. Okay. They'll accept it for no. now, but in the, now let me finish. Okay. So Mobi and EPUB are the most common used formats right now, and Amazon has flat out said, we will currently accept those, but the day is coming when you will try to upload one, and we will say, nope. So if you're building your whole tool chain around that, oh. Well, the other thing you can also do is go to Fiverr and have your book converted to Kindle format for five bucks. Okay. Well, the problem with that is you have to find somebody that can actually do it. The pro the, the big problem right now is we've got some special effects here. Can you write it in Kindle format? I mean, is there? Well, let, let me just finish my thoughts. So. Um, Kindle Format 8, the KF8 format, is just a subset of uh, HTML and CSS. So HTML is the markup like H1 and H2 and whatever, and CSS says, you know, to use this font, you know, like uh, Shane was talking about um, uh, Times Roman or whatever. The style. So the styling. So you've got the structure and the, the styling or presentation, two mm -hmm. separate beasts. Mm -hmm. 
And KFH says that uh, Amazon says we'll accept these HTML tags and these CSS uh, directives. Mm -hmm. And as long as you use those, you can actually, if you're good enough to publish, uh, to write, like I write, most of the websites I turn out, I write by hand. Because I can write HTML far faster than I can set up a WordPress site or or Let's try to use your some. Techie back yeah, I don't know yeah. HTML. Yeah. So, but but the point is, you what you you pick a technology that um, you can work with fast. Right. And the reason I picked the text-based ones is that there's no conversation about formatting or tags or any of that stuff because if you start thinking about well all right now how's my title going to look and you think well I can reach up here and change the it font that's that, that breaks your concentration mm -hmm. on generating your content mm -hmm. better to write first and know that you're going to use a tool afterwards to format mm -hmm. the formatting's off then hopefully like the tool that I'm writing has a skinning feature so I can build a skin in to change the way the output looks. So if I'd like to change the whole way Beautiful Business looks, I can just change the skin I use. Mm -hmm. Just write a new skin. Which is like so, a style sheet. Yeah, it's like a, it's ba basically just a style sheet, a CSS file. So still, like, mine are handwritten right now. Yeah, so in, in your case, uh, uh, handwritten ones, I mean, what you could do is you could scan those on a high quality scanner and send them fiber to somebody to type. Into or what format? You wouldn't. Oh. You scan them into an image, ping, JPEG, whatever. Okay. Just scan. Now I've got a, a scanner upstairs, and if you um, if you email me, I will find the number, the part number of that that's really slick, and it has OCR built into it. And a lot of times, it will actually, if the if the writing is dark enough and it's actual printing, if it's cursive, forget it. But if it's printed, like I print everything, so I can OCR it. Um, and so one of these printers, a lot of times you can just run your handwritten notes into and it, mm -hmm. it'll get about a 90 to 95% conversion rate. Nice. Yeah. Into what I'll format? It, it'll kick out a PDF file. PDF, okay. Or a text file, either one. So PDF, that, so Kindle will take PDF files? They will today, but that's not, you, you, eventually everyone <coughs> is going to have to go to KF8, so, period. I thought you said it was dead. KF8 is, no, KF8 is the only one oh, that is live. Everything else is dead. That's Everything that's else is live. That's the go-to. Okay. So the ones they accept now are, e are .epub and .mobi and .pdf, .doc, and .docx. Okay, and so how do we get to KF8? I'm gonna have, I'm gonna, oh, that's okay, another good. conversation for another, that's a long, okay. longer conversation. Okay. I just wanted to buy yeah. So, can so for right now, you just get your, when you're writing your books, rather than thinking about formatting, write them in text. Screenshot. Right. In, in Microsoft just Microsoft no. Yeah. Well, you, I mean, you can write them in Microsoft, okay. but you but uh, you don't do any formatting with them. Your goal is just to have the text. So that would just know yeah, just do it in Notepad. I, I use I use the VI editor in Linux because I can use that. Yeah, just the most basic. Yeah. So the, the key point here is to allow your stream of consciousness to flow. Yes. Yeah. Avoid anything breaking your stream of consciousness. All the word processors yeah. out there just make you crazy with the red underlines. Oh, I hate that, that stuff. That's why I just write by hand. Yeah. Well, and the other thing too is instead of writing by hand, please people do not write by hand. Mm -hmm. Get a digital recorder because you can speak way faster and it's in a conversational style. Imagining like if I was talking with Lacey about her project um, and we were recording an interview, we would have a conversation about whatever it was. And so Lacey, when you're writing your book, if you can imagine somebody that is... Um, you've had conversations with around your topic or imagine, like maybe you could imagine having a conversation with uh, Albert Einstein or Martin Luther King. Have a conversation with them and record it, right? And just hold that person's frequency in your mind and have a conversation with them. And then the frequency, of, frequency and cadence and amplitude of your yeah. voice will echo through the person that you're speaking with in your mind. And that completely changes the entire um, and you get it transcribed and do it. Yeah, you send it to phone somebody on Fiverr to transcribe it then for, uh, you know, a few dollars. <coughs> I, I, I'm looking at the time. I have an appointment to go. So yeah, let's, all, let's, take a, let's take maybe a 15-minute uh, uh, rest here, and then we'll just, uh, uh, I'm going to go through and answer the rest of these questions, and then we'll, we'll yeah, wrap for the day. Trust me, I will show you.